146 Prayer Presence of God, O Lord, I come to ask of you the true spirit of prayer. Meditation 1. Prayer is essentially an intimate conversation with God, in which the soul seeks His presence, so that it may speak with Him, in a friendly and affectionate way. It is a child talking with its father, a friend conversing with his friend. From its very nature, then, prayer is something intimate and interior. For me, said Saint Teresa of the Child Jesus, prayer is an uplifting of the heart, a glance toward heaven, a cry of gratitude, and of love in times of sorrow as well, as of joy. St. 11. In this perspective we must understand the traditional definition of prayer elevation meant to sad doom, the raising of the mind to God, and not only the mind, but also, and especially, the heart. Prayer may be a silent movement of the mind, or simply a cry, a request, a colloquy, in these latter motions are verified the other aspects of prayer. Pilocu show ad doom, a pious conversation with God, and petisho dissentium adio, a confident request for his graces. Whatever form it takes, true prayer is not complicated or constrained, it is the breath of the soul that loves its God, the habitual attitude of the heart which tends toward God. The soul seeks him, wants to live with him, knows that every benefit, every help, comes from him. Thus, spontaneously, without even thinking about it, the soul passes from the simple elevation toward God, to the prayer of petition, or to intimate colloquy, to arrive finally at the transport of the heart, the glance toward heaven. Prayer understood in this way is always possible, in all kinds of circumstances, and in the midst of varying occupations. Furthermore, for a soul, who really loves God, it would be as impossible for it to interrupt prayer, as it would be for it to stop breathing. We can thus understand how everyone even those living in the world, can fulfill the words of the Gospel Pray Always LK 18, 1. The one condition necessary is to have a heart capable of loving, the stronger and more vigorous this love is, the deeper and more continuous will the prayer be. 2. Although it may be a simple matter, it is not always easy to pray and to pray well, it is an art to be learned by studying the various forms and methods of prayer, or better still, by diligently applying ourselves to prayer itself. While the essence of prayer is always the interior movement, the elevation of mind and heart to God, the forms of it differ there is vocal prayer, and mental prayer, discursive prayer, and effective prayer, private prayer and liturgical prayer. We employ one, or another of these, in conformity with what is required by our duties. Thus, for example, all Christians are bound to certain vocal and liturgical prayers, such as morning and evening prayers, attendance at Mass on Sundays, and holy days of obligation. But after that, we are free to choose according to the particular attraction of the moment, special circumstances, or individual needs. All these forms are good, and serve to nourish our love for God, provided that we really put ourselves in touch with Him. We should always be careful about this point, because it is the substance of prayer, and if this were lacking, the form would be useless, and God could say of us, This people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Me 15, 8. However, 
a soul aspiring to divine intimacy will turn spontaneously toward a holy interior form of prayer, a form which will facilitate an intimate contact with God, a silent, profound union. All forms of prayer will assume this special characteristic of interiority. Therefore, through vocal and liturgical prayer, as well as through mental prayer, the soul will make its way toward God and dispose itself for an ever-increasing intimacy with Him until God Himself, by means of the loving experience and the contemplative light, will introduce it into a prayer which is more profound and capable of immersing it in Him colloquy. Grant, O good Jesus, that my soul may always fly toward you, that my entire life may be one continual act of love. Make me understand that any work which is not done in your honor is a dead work. Grant that my piety may not become just a habit, but a continual elevation of my heart. O oh my Jesus, supreme goodness, I ask of you a heart so enraptured with you, that nothing can distract it. I wish to become indifferent to everything that goes on in the world and to want you alone, to love everything that refers to you, but you above everything else, O oh my God. And my spirit, O oh Lord, my spirit grant that it may be zealous in seeking you, and may succeed in finding you, O Sovereign Wisdom. St. Thomas, O Lord, give me a heart which will love you, seek you uncompromisingly, always long for you, and have no other desire than to be closely united to you. May my soul languish and sigh for you, my heart and my senses cry eagerly for you. O living God, as the sparrow has found herself a house, and the turtle dove a nest, so do I long to dwell near your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King, and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in your house, O Lord, and who pray to you always. Compare PS 83, 1-5. I also from morning until night, wish to chant in the temple of my heart hymns of praise and love in your honor. O Most High God, who condescend to dwell in me if my tongue is silent or occupied with other discourses, if my mind and body are busy working, my heart is always free to love you and to turn toward you at every instant, in every action. O Lord, I beg this great grace of you, may I always seek you in the depths of my soul, and unite myself to you, in the affection of my heart.